Hey guys, what's up? Today is Tuesday, September 23rd, and we have a new patch for Diablo 3. Uh, they kind of announced it at the last minute, and there was no patch notes until after the patch was applied, which some people thought was kind of weird. Um, before we go over some of the major changes, here's the big one that uh, they claim is a quality of life improvement, but... Uh, Judging from what I've seen on some of the posts on the forum, which that's a bit bad, bad place to make an opinion, because a lot of forums there's just a lot of pissing and moaning. Um, but I've been watching, I checked out some streams real quick to see what other people were thinking, and generally the consensus is, this kind of sucks. Uh, they took Kadala, and this is what the patch notes say. While Kadala is doing a great job of giving players more control over finding specific items, we felt current experience was a bit cumbersome and inconvenient. As a result, we're working to reduce the frequency at which players need to run between Kadala and the blacksmith to salvage unwanted items. The cost to purchase items from Kadala has been greatly increased, and the chance for a legendary to drop or the chance for Kadala to drop a legendary item has also been greatly increased. Now Travis Day said the price went up five times, and the legendary drop chance went up five times, with I think a 10%, no, the drop chance went up five times with a 10% increase on top of that for legendaries or something along those lines. But in all the bitching and whining and pissing and moaning that I've seen over this game, the one thing I never saw anybody complain about was having to spend their blood shards, and then run back to uh, the blacksmith, because a lot of people weren't real concerned, because they were getting crafting mats, and people were burning through them. I just burnt through all my uh, lost souls, or forgotten souls, uh, re-rolling my flying dragon to put a socket on it after, or to take a socket off, and get a damage percent increase after uh, I got a Ramaladni's gift. And I didn't even get the top plus percent damage bonus either. But, um... So, and Forgotten Souls aren't exactly, like, the easiest thing in the world to get either. But, what I s seem to notice is... Uh, there was a lot of talk over how easily people were able to gear at the beginning of the season. And... I'm wondering, and I've seen this theory pop up a couple times, I'm wondering if this was actually, like, Blizzard's way of addressing people getting geared so fast with the new character. Which, that's probably the most it's going to hurt, is when you're starting a new character, or let's say somebody is new to the game. That's where, you know, a lot of their stuff came from to get them towards the end game was gambling with Kadala, but um, and it also kind of hurts too because she, with all them blues that she'd hand out, you always generally you weren't too low on um, arcane dust or anything like that, but you know, it is what it is. I think it's kind of a stupid change of all the things that people are saying needs fixed in the game that was probably the one that I think people didn't expect to even pop up as an issue, so I think there's more to it than what the official notes say and what they're trying to pass as the reason for the change. And the thing of it is, too, what's really going to suck for, like, when you start a season or if you start a new character for whatever reason, like a hardcore character, uh, if you're only able to do, like, T1 rifts, you don't get that many blood shards. Um, I think like a T4 rift gives you 70? 65 to 70, somewhere in that ballpark. And I can't remember off the top of my head what the other torments give you. But, um, so people are going to be, they're going to be at it for a while, trying to, if they're expecting items from Kadala. Now, I think the people that will suffer the least will probably be, you know, the ones that are at the end game. They're running greater rifts, they're running T6, and things of that nature. They probably won't be hit by this too hard, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. A lot of my 
I got some decent items from Kadala, but I I don't think I've ever completed a set from her. Like, gotten every set item from her. Usually what happens is I get a few set items as drops in game, and then I use her to focus on the set items that I'm missing, or um, like a specific thing like a... Uh, uh, what's it called? A quiver <laughs> for like a demon hunter, a source for the uh, wizard. But um, you know, for the most part, I didn't focus a lot on getting all my items from her. But it's still, I think it's gonna suck, you know, uh, for the people that really focused on using her for targeting a specific legendary or a specific set item. Uh, right now, like in Seasons, I'm having a hard time getting a fifth piece to my Akan set for my Crusader. I haven't got him to drop, I haven't got him from Kadala, you know, it, I keep getting Invokers and Rollins, and I just need, like, the, the shoulders or something for my Akan set, and I'd be perfectly happy with where I want to go with the build that I'm trying to do, and it'd give me a little bit more flexibility, and I could progress a little bit farther... But uh, moving on from that, some of the other changes is uh, to the Crusaders. Uh, Shield Bash can now be interrupted during the hit animations. And for Witch Doctors, the Fetish Army, the Fetish Army, or the Fetish Life has been greatly increased. Movement speed has been significantly increased, and Fetish Leash range has been increased. Gargantuan is now summoned at the location of your mouse cursor. Animation speed has been increased. Spirit Walk no longer cancels early when the physical body that is left behind takes enough damage. And Zombie Dog life has been greatly increased. Passive skills too. Uh, that's sick of fans. Fetish life has been greatly increased. Movement speed has been greatly increased. And leash range has been greatly increased. Fetish Army and Fetish Sycophants portrait icons should now display more fitting names on mouse over. That's an interface change. Uh, pets in general are properly affected by shield pylons. Uh, many monster attacks that are intended to be avoided by players and weren't already dealing reduced damage to pets now deal significantly less damage to pets. And the survivability is roughly equivalent, equivalent to that of the player that summoned them. So that's a big boon. A lot of people were kind of... There was a lot of... outcry over how easily Witch Doctor pets could be killed. So it's, that's a good fix. Uh, some item changes. The Firebird's Finery, the Infinite DOT debuff should now have a unique effect when it's applied. Uh, the Boon of the Hoarder, they... Long story short, they lowered the amount of gold piles, but they increased the amount of gold in each pile to cut down on screen clutter. Uh, the Moratorium Secondary Power can now be triggered by assists. The Bane of the Trap damage increase will now probably applied to frozen enemies, but there's still a bug there with the monks. Uh, the gem of facious toxin DOT can now properly be applied by pet attacks. And I forgot I wasn't wearing my Countess Julia's cameo anymore. So I died. Um, greater Rift Trials have received numerous adjustments in an effort to make more accurately assess an appropriate level of Greater Rift. The large aqueduct and sewer maps will no longer show up in Greater Rifts. Thank God. Uh, fix an issue that could cause Greater Rift Guardians to sometimes drop multiples of the same legendary gem. I don't... I never had that issue. Uh, here's one that people are going to like. It's not a 100% drop rate, but at least makes it a little bit more quality of life improvement for people that are playing in groups. In multiplayer games, the Key of Bones, Key of Gluttony, and the Key of War will now be considered group drops. Instead of players having an individual chance to find a key, that chance now exists at a party level. If a Key of Bones, a Key of Gluttony, or a Key of War drops, it will drop for everyone in the party at the time. So that's a nice thing. Uh, for crafting... And <laughs> this is a troll. They reduced the cost of of uh, enchanting rings and amulets. Instead of having a uh, flawless imperial gem, you just need a regular imperial gem. Motherfuckers. Um, 
So all those gems that you leveled up to craft into imperial or flawless imperial gems, you didn't have to after this patch. That fucking. But uh, uh, a couple other things: the monsters' electrified monster affix now has a short internal cooldown. Damage of the butcher's fan of spears attack has been slightly reduced. The range of charging beast attack has been slightly reduced. Plague nest bats have their health globe drop rate significantly decreased. I, slowly phasing out uh, Reaper's wraps on all my characters because there's uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of. I know they said they weren't going to decrease the amount of health globes that dropped in the game. They were just going to decrease the amount that they healed. But I feel like I'm seeing a lot less health globes than I did before 2.1. So I phased them out so far on my Demon Hunter, my Monk, I think my Wizard. Uh, Nephilim Rifts and Greater Rifts had some changes to their enemies. The Maggot Broods no longer start out burrowed in Nephilim Rifts and Greater Rifts. Sand Dwellers no longer start out burrowed in either Rift. Demonic Hellflyers now run away less frequently and no longer ambush players from the air. Ghosts now run away less frequently and no longer fly through walls in Nephilim Rifts and Greater Rifts. And Rockworms can no longer spawn in Nephilim and Greater Rifts. Uh, the Ghost thing, I'm glad they did. That was a pain in the ass if you're playing a melee class. Also, those, uh, the, uh, those little Bone Warlock guys, I can't remember their names now. Skeleton Summoners. Uh, they're little assholes, too, when it comes to running away. But all in all, I think outside of the Kadala change, I think it was a good, good patch. Um, but there's a couple other things I'm sure people are going to want to see changed. There's a lot of crying over the uh, conduit pylons in the uh, or conduit shrines and rifts, uh, especially the greater rifts. But uh, as somebody pointed out on a stream that I was watching, that's mainly a softcore issue because you do not see uh, the average hardcore player can't uh, spam rifts like that. It's too much of a risk to their one life. So, I don't know. I do think there's going to be some... There's too much RNG involved in how you're going to get up the leaderboards. But at the same time, and this is basically what the streamer said, if you have no punishment um, outside of basically the repair costs after you respawn, people are going to find the most exploitive, easiest way to complete a challenge in a game that they can. And uh, really, outside of playing hardcore, where that much of a risk is kind of too much to take you're just I, we're gonna have to put up with it in seasons until something until they either remove shrines from greater rifts or they remove the conduit shrines um, but you know for the time being it is what it is like I said and some of my other thoughts about seasons I kind of expected there was gonna be some exploitation of certain game mechanics and um, so far that's kind of how it's been hopefully they kind of gather up everything they learned from this first season and we'll see what happens in the next one but uh, this is kind of going on a little long and we covered most of the things oh also a little bit ago when that goblin was there uh, undocumented change when you find a goblin they'll have a portal already spawned and I think that's just so you notice the goblin more easily Outside of that, I can't see what he's uh, supposed to be doing. But anyways, guys, I, I want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. All right? Have a good one, guys.